All right, welcome back to module number five. This module only has one slide, but there's actually a lot of information here I want you guys to think about or actually can give you a lot to think about. Most vacation home or second home buyers actually already have a picture or a choice in mind. It is their dream home that has given them plenty of time in their mind to picture their property. They already have colors picked out. They have a style picked out. They have a location picked out. They have a price range picked out. The good thing that's going to be for you is now all you really have to do is kind of listen to them. Collect the data and use it to find the property. Let them explain to you directly what they're looking for. Oh, we want a Spanish style house in <clears throat> Ocala, Florida. Um, it's probably not a best choice. My aunt and uncle live in Ocala and it's not on the beach, but say Fort Myers or Sanibel. Um, they're going to tell you the square footage. Uh, they're going to tell you, uh, you know, the, our price range. <clears throat> that is going to allow you, excuse me, <clears throat> that's going to allow you to cut a lot of time out searching because you, they are so specific in what they want that when you start searching your local MLS or whatever system you want to use, it's going to be much easier to narrow down and literally say, hey, look, there's two properties we can look at. Now, most of us know, and I can already see you giggling and laughing, that a lot of first-time home buyers, and this isn't a course on first-time home buyers, we've already done that course, um, say, hey, man, just I, I, I need a three-bedroom, two-bath house anywhere in you know, blah, blah, blah County because I want my kids to go to this school system. You understand, and I, I love telling people, you understand there's like 4,000 of those. Be more specific. Uh, you know, do you want a pool? Do you want a fence? Do you want a garage? How many acres? Basement? All that kind of stuff. So sometimes you have to coach those people to get them to give you information. And then you find something and they go, well, we were really wanting a basement. Well, you didn't tell me that. Here in a house that these people are wanting to buy, they have already have the picture in the he their head. Your job is to translate that picture to data and then use that data to simply find the one house or the three or four that can say, here's what we found, here's meets everything you need. Let's reduce our effort by only having to look at four houses, all right? Now, that is a very good thing for you guys because it's going to help you eliminate a lot of the chaff from the wheat, so to speak. Now, the bad side to it is this. They could be unrealistic. And this is another problem. It's almost too, too good of a good thing. Sometimes what they have in their head may not be available. So that could pose one of two problems. Understand that. One problem that it could pose is that you have to actually rein them in a little bit. And we understand that these may be affluent buyers, but if someone can afford a million dollar home, but they have described a $2 million home, that's a problem. So you're going to have to temper their expectations, so to speak, by saying, hey, um, yeah, that's great, but uh, we can't, that's, that's not in your price range. So that's one of the problems that you could have. The second problem is there literally just is no property that match, matches that. And because they are buying a home they want to buy, it is potentially possible they may, oh, well, what, we can hold off another three months or four months or we'll just wait till one comes on the market, right? So you get what I'm saying. It, 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 because they're not having to buy, you know, a lot of times, and I keep going back to first-time home buyers because I see them on the opposite end of the spectrum. First-time home buyers are like, we got to get in the school system by the beginning of the year, so we need to buy, yada, 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 where these people are like, hey, look, we don't need to buy. We've already got a primary residence. We already live here. We want X, Y, and Z, and if it's not there, we're not going to settle for, you know, D, E, and F. 
we'll wait till X, Y, and Z comes on the market. So that's a second potential problem is the imperativeness of buying is not there. So that could cause a second issue. One, their expectation or their dream picture may be unrealistic. And two, is that their time frame is not as uh, immediate as maybe some other buyer, all right? So let's move on to module number six here in a second.